assembled by Black Triptychs. Uh, we've got uh, Tom Hughes and Paul Fox uh, with joining me. Uh, we're just going to talk to them about their work. Uh, and uh, if, you, if anyone's watching live and they want to throw in some questions, we'll take some questions as well, maybe. Um, but um, chaps, you, you've just joined us hoofing it from Beaver Forest in Belfast. Mm -hmm. uh, can, can you talk about some of the <laughs> interesting things you were up to in the forest? <laughs> um, yeah, I suppose we can. Um, is that a secret? Um, well, so um, we're both musicians and we knew each other since school. Um, but recently I was, I was asked to do a bit of work with Dumbworld, um, mm. the kind of operatic production company in Belfast. Um, so it's probably about walk-ins we're doing on Tuesday. Um, it's like a kind of a musical uh, footstep. Sort of like meditative walk-in type of exercise. Yeah. yeah. It's very experimental. It's kind of like a development project. So mm. um, we've got a dancer, Maeve McGreevy, um, working with us as well. Lovely, lovely Maeve. Oh, you know Maeve, yeah. Very talented. <clears throat> yeah, she's great. Um, and uh, yeah, we were just doing a rehearsal for that um, there. So we're a bit out of puff. Yeah. Uh, walking through the forest. Yeah. Is it anything, is it immersive in headphones or is it uh, all uh, around the forest different? It's the idea is that the, the, there's a percussive foundation made with footsteps. Mm. And it's, you know, we only had a Maeve and then someone from Dumbworld there. So there's only four of us. And we were then playing a bit of music around it. We sort of have some improvised electronic weird instruments to play yeah. for a part of the walk. It's like our busking busking setup. Yeah, it's almost like a busking, black triptych's busking <laughs> setup, yeah. Um, so is, it, is it recorded, is it? Is it or is it an audience are there as well? So it's, it's really like a immersive, oh, I've described it as participatory performance, where you come and you perform as part of the group nice. so you're kind of and it's, and the central the idea is that you know whenever we walk with other people there's a natural improvisation that happens you kind of like match mm. their pace and and sometimes it's very unconscious so it's trying to tap into that a bit and a lot of people who wouldn't normally experience improvisation on a musical level or a theatrical yeah. or dance level um to kind of have have an, a go at that that back and forth that the listening and the kind of reacting that is central improvisation, and um, and that, that kind of taps into what Paul and I do in Black Triptychs as well. Like mm. A lot of our stuff stuff is very improvisational, um, and it kind of um, so it was a nice it was a nice blend of you know bringing Paul in felt really natural to yeah it was kind of like a crossover wasn't it between like that project that you wanted to do and then our stuff that we've been doing it just worked quite it was quite like not yeah it was like natural like Tom said yeah, it's quite yeah. uh, it was good um it's good to have like that sort of uh like the nature like being out in in the forest and stuff and having nature around and then having like these weird sort of electronic instruments going at the same yeah. time it's like a nice like juxtaposition it's there kind of a nice segue then to talk about your your other work or mm -hmm. your main work because uh, you, you alluded to that it's it, it's it's similar to that so you can give us some give people who may not have seen you before or may not have seen you at handmade who which which because uh, it's been a few months now since you were you were uh, uh, performing in the stage directly above us mm -hmm. um you know, tell people a bit about your work what, what what's inspired it you know you, you've been together since school yeah well, that, well black triptych certainly didn't no. exist then. There no. was a few different. <laughs> <laughs> that would have been kind of cool. Like, uh, yeah, like it was cool this long. Like fifteen-year-old scrawl. <laughs> yeah. Black yeah. in the early days. I think it was our our, our age right now probably um, contributes to the kind of music we make. Yeah, uh, kind of. <laughs> but um, no, we. It was really like uh, you know like a lot of music these days it comes out of lockdown. Um, but I, I had been wanting to make more music. I'd been in. Both of us have been in bands and various things like the years. since we're teenagers. Yeah, really. yeah. And some of us, we, we play together sometimes and then branched off and did other things. Um, I was always like either playing bass or cello. Mm -hmm. um, I was, was a drummer mostly. Um, and I also like for a while was doing my own sort of solo stuff. Uh, and then, yeah, and then like during lockdown, it was just after the lockdown, wasn't mm -hmm. it, that you phoned me up? Um, yeah, because I, I think I just asked you, do you want to play music? And you said you were uh, interested in doing some like weird ambient blues stuff. Yeah, and yeah, that's I was right. like, oh, that sounds cool. Let's <laughs> yeah. try that. And it eventually just morphed and we spent a year like just... You're just jamming every week. We would get together, uh, usually sort of, it was like a Wednesday night or something for a long time. And um, we had like various practice spaces that we were in and out of. Mm -hmm. 
uh, and every but every week nearly it was we would get together and for about two hours just I would bring a couple of samplers and Tom bring his cello and he like started collecting together all these effects pedals and stuff to run his cello through and it's just like we just we didn't really have anything in mind that we wanted it to sound like to begin with we just sort of started jamming and eventually it became its own thing mm -hmm. turned into sort of like a weird blend of ambient and classical nearly I would mm. say there's like a classical element to it with the cello and stuff yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah it's, and we then had it, uh, our first gig was August last year 2022 in uh, what we've actually called the granny flat which is um, the granny flat connects to my mother-in-law's house and it was really risky I, you know I didn't really know what people would think mm. but people really liked it and it's it kind of just kind of went from there. We don't gig very often. <laughs> yeah, we've only done what, like three, three gigs three, so far, gigs. three or four. Yeah. Um, and we did another Granny Flat gig at the end of the summer, so it's going to become an annual thing, hopefully. Um, but it, it, I suppose it, it cemented the kind of sound we mm. make, and then playing on handmade kind of was an opportunity to really take that to that audience. And the Granny Flat was really like family and friends, mm. and quite intimate. Mm. Um, but yeah. It's kind of how we started. The, the kind of granny flat stuff is, I think, really quite interesting. I think as, ar as artists often feel, you know, you're driven, at, le at least f from my side, you're driven to perform to bigger audiences, get revenue, mm -hmm. get sustainability, you know, be a small business as much as be artists. But yeah. those kind of small events and, you know, pieces like you're doing today in, in Beaver, they feel much more exciting often because you get that connection with the audience, that feedback, that performer stroke spectator kind of line is, is blurred a lot more yeah. um, you know is that where you would like to go more and more with 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 your work is is those kind of small intimate gigs or do you I want think, to grow like, it to I think because uh, of me and Tom being like we're older and I like we're both in our mid-30s and we're married and have kids and you know we have I will, I will just interrupt for one second and say that uh, that's still not older. Okay, <laughs> older than I mean. I mean older than I, I'm, I'm not that much older than you, but yeah. like <laughs> to hear anyone say <laughs> mid thirties uh, well, is I mean, older. I mean older than the, the usual. Like when you're tre you're younger and you're like a musician and you're thinking to yourself, uh, the, uh, you're really wanting to make it as a musician and you know make it into a business for yourself and stuff and make money and all. It's usually when you're a bit younger and you've got the time and stuff, but you get older and you realize you know, like there's other stuff happening in your life and you're a bit more free to, like you don't have to take it as seriously as making mm. it into like a, a, a business and, you know, promoting yourself all the time and all mm. that. Like we just wanted to, we really, what was important to us was that it was s uh, something that we both were proud of. Uh, we both liked the sound of it. It was both something that we were like into ourselves. It wasn't like, we like we always said, well, we're going to just, play every single gig that we got offered and stuff and you know be trying to get the name out there all the time and constantly just promoting and promoting you know we wanted to focus more on the artistic side of mm. things you know what I mean and make something that was uh, that was cool that was that you know that was interesting to us mostly you know it wasn't like we didn't have like a goal or anything like in mind for you know how like successful or unsuccessful or anything it was going to be, you know, that's how I've always felt about it anyway. And you've got, so you, you don't say yes to every gig, so what kind of route drew you to Handmade? Well, it was actually um, Mark Reed who uh, works with Moving On Music mm. um, and obviously set up Handmade with Paul Stapleton at Sark and yourselves mm. here at Accidental. Um, and I, I, I know Mark through mutual friends and kind of like, you know, to the the work Mark has done in the past, to Bobby Astrum and all his kind of um, ordinary days, nights and stuff. Um, and I just contacted him because he has that label, Touch Sensitive as well. Um, just saying, I'm doing this and we've got this, and we recorded the Granny Flat gig last year as a kind of a bit of a demo. And it just was a happy coincidence. He was setting up this night and asked us to play. And it, I suppose it kind of fitted with what Handmade kind of is, where it's that... You know, what's nice about it is, because it, it's got the moving on music part and the Sark part, you've got the kind of very avant-garde mm. elements of the Sark that can be brought in. And then you've got more of the indie label kind of stuff and a bit more maybe stuff that just 
as on the edge of avant-garde mm -hmm. or just touching it, but... Two, two slightly overlapping Venn diagrams of niche music. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. But there's also that kind of sense of it's it's not like... I always wanted our music to be listenable. I didn't mm. want it to be kind of experimental for the sake of it or kind of like just noise. You know, I know that there's plenty of noise acts out there. There's plenty of really experimental stuff, which is great. But, it, you know, I think Handmade, for me, really fitted that sense of... It's more about the intent to, like, mm. make something that's maybe interesting or unusual. Um, but it doesn't need to be really, really weird or, you know... I think that goes back to it as well. Uh, like, the it, we want what I was saying about how we wanted it to sound like something that we liked, you know, like I part, I wouldn't really listen to anything that was too like um, experimental or just noise or anything. I not even like I was I've always been into like ambient music and, you know, sort of stuff that's sort of listenable. It's quite out there, but it's still in the realm of like what, what you could be, you know, what you would term as still music rather than just pure noise type of stuff. Um, like I think that we're like quite, um, I don't know, it's more like sort of like film soundtracky types mm -hmm. music. Do you know what I mean? It's kind of like that has that sort of feel to me. Yeah, I suppose there's that kind of like yeah, you know, like kind of post classical. I I don't, I don't like all the classical comparisons. Yeah, there's like, <laughs> but there's that sense of. But that, like, like, yeah. me, me and you sort of differ, I think, on what it what it sounds like. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like I have ideas of what it sounds like in my head, and then you've got like sort of slightly different view of it. I think that's mm. what's good what's good about it. Like it's not um it's not something that is uh you know contrived that way where it's like oh we're trying to like get like a post classical sort of band together, yeah, you know what I mean? It's just uh, we we both bring our individual uh like signs and preferences to it and we just mesh them together and you know then it's turned into something that's like within its own right that sounds like you know, it's like, it's like something new out of both of those things. Yeah, yeah. Well, it sounds new to me anyway. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, it's and, it's and to be honest, it's like, as Paul said, it was always about doing something that we liked. But it's also about doing stuff that we find we enjoy playing. Mm -hmm. And the improvisational element, element is huge to that because I've been in bands where it's great, you've got a song written by a songwriter and, you know, you arrange around the song and it's it's great and I've been lucky enough to be in bands with really good songwriters um, but there's something lovely about not having that you know especially mm -hmm. as you know as throughout my life as and I suppose with you as well playing like a bass or a cello or drums you're accompanying a lot you know mm -hmm. you're kind of not taking the lead unless you've got like a solo or a, a wee line you do um, so this was really an opportunity to kind of like you know, strip that all away and try to find the ways to make rhythms and samples and cello lines and textures and drones kind of the focus of it all. Um, and like whether it fits into that world of music or that world of music, it was a really care. It's mm. like, you know, we just enjoy doing it. I know. think it's nice as well that, uh, you know, we wanted to have, we wanted it to be still like a band, you know, we still wanted to have it where it was two people playing and it was kind of live sounding you know so much like ambient music and electronic type of music is very like pre-prepared and you know for producing electronic music myself over like many years it's like quite lonely you know you don't you don't get that experience of playing in a band and like I've always been I've been in bands and stuff but it's mostly been like indie music and rock music and stuff like that you know uh, it's interesting I think to have that band sort of dynamic only in like an electronic sort of, you know, ambient type of music, you know what I mean? We wanted to have that live uh, sort of experience too for people. We wanted to have something that we're playing live and it's like, you know, so much of it is improvised so anything could happen. Uh, but you, we, the people who are watching, they know that they can see what's making the sound and what's, you know, being done at least like to... A certain extent, especially with like the cello and stuff, you know, it's mm. really nice to have that live sort of, you know, you can see what Tom's doing, you can see all those loads of guitar pedals there, and he's, you know, it's it's, it's quite a physical sort of interaction, mm. you know what I mean? We still wanted to have to have that sort of physical, um, sort of interaction with the audience and with each other. You know, having like this band 
sort of feel like a mm. live, you know, setup and stuff that was important to us as well. That's awesome because, especially with the electronic music and a lot of stuff, you know, Sark and uh, other pieces, it can feel impenetrable yeah. um, because of that disconnection between, as you say, the, the physical object mm. and the sound. Yeah. You know, you can, you, you, the audience is kind of alienated in that way a little yeah. bit. And But from what you're saying from your work, it's a, it's a lot about making that work, your what your music more accessible to them and then them, again, going back to the Beaver Project, them access, accessible into your work as well, that kind of responsiveness. There does seem to be a common theme within what uh, Mark and Paul and, uh, and, and the team at Hadmead are, are doing throughout a lot of the different shows is that kind of different reaction and the, the improvisational nature of music yeah. being responded to by the audience and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And it seems to be very exciting. I, I love that you, you're doing that, but also the band kind of the camaraderie, the connection between the two of you yeah. as well is, yeah. is, is a main focus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, for those kind of coming uh, up uh, alongside and behind uh, who are kind of wanting, you have that kind of, I'm, I want to do my, my thing in my sound, but I'm lonely in my room doing, doing twiddling uh, different thing, dials. <laughs> Wasn't going to say the other word. <laughs> yeah. uh, but the, you, know, w w w you know, what would you say to kind of get, to inspire people to kind of, uh, to not necessarily follow your route and your choices, but to, to how would you tell people to kind of step into their own groove and their own work? Well, it, I suppose there's, there's absolutely nothing wrong with sitting in your bedroom and um, laying down tracks and working on, you know, tweaking effects and getting something sounding exactly right. Um, and there's nothing wrong with mm. going to a gig and someone sitting behind a laptop. And, yeah. It's more just know, that, that it's isolating often. People, as, as, as Paul said, can, exactly. can feel it's mm. isolating. And as it, was, it, it all, like, I think as far as I remember, I've always played an acoustic instrument. And there's always been that sense of, OK, this instrument exists in a space. And whenever you have a computer or a, you know, anything like that, it, it kind of, you know, you're dependent on the amplification and all this kind of stuff. So the thing is, you know, I always felt that there was a connection with the audience with three an acoustic instrument that's different with, you know, so, you know, it's kind of like, I think it's always about, you know, try to try to like, you know, yeah, make make physical reactions as part of your set. So like kind of have ways that you trigger signs that are visible to the audience. There's a physical Paul said, kind of like you press a button, something happens, you turn something, mm. something unnoticeable happens, rather than like this kind of, you know, impenetrable thing. Um, I think it's important as well to have that, uh, you know, I mean, like in, in my own experience of being in bands, I've always really enjoyed the relationships that everybody has in bands. You know, you become like very close to the people who you're making music with. And I think it's important to have that. Like that's a whole side of being a musician that I love that, um, I think is lacking if you are just a bedroom producer and you're sitting in your room and you're working on your tracks all the time, you know, you're kind of uh, like, it's great to be, um, to be built an experience in production and stuff that way. But I think also it's good to get out there and experience that side of music that, you know, you, that the, like the emotional side of music, the, like the, the sort of like, you know, the closeness that you can develop when you're, in a band with one person, it doesn't matter if it's one person or like five or ten people, you're all like, you know, working towards the same goal. You're all, you've all got, you know, it's a, it's a nice thing to be able to, you know, combine ideas with other people and to share the experience of making music, you know. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's really important. So I would say to anyone who's just sitting in their room to try and get out there and take whatever it is. Like, it doesn't matter if you can't, play an acoustic instrument and you're only say you, you know, your only experiences with you know a laptop or something you'll bring I would like to see more people bring in their laptops and just mm. getting together and making weird like laptop based music but like it's a communal thing do you know mm, what I mean yeah. I think that's important yeah Marty um, who, who, who works with us here at Accidental he started a, a project called Cosmic Jam and yeah. it's entirely designed around that idea of, you know, you bring down whatever you've got, we'll mm. have instruments lined up, mm. you, you bring down what you want, and then at the end, we all just jam together as well. Yeah. Which I think that's a, that lovely kind of feeling of communal sharing of ideas, sharing of skills, and, mm. and, and also getting the, the chance to put your, 
your own stuff out there and yeah. start to get uh, feedback on it. I yeah. think it's a, a really, um, a thing that Northern Ireland in some ways loses a little bit or is lost, uh, I don't know, because we've got such a small, slightly insular community sometimes yeah. uh, that we are often kept in little silos from each other and don't often come together as yeah. much as maybe we, we could or other places are kind of forced to. Yeah. Um, so Black Triptychs, what's next? Um, well, we've got an album um, due to come out um, hopefully at the end of November, um, and hopefully here. Yes, yeah, that's true. Yeah, um, we've still got a few. I things completely to... forgot about that. <laughs> <laughs> We're literally emailing about it. So, so, yeah. uh, we've still got a few things to iron out, but hopefully we'll be announcing that uh, very soon, and have uh, a special guest as well. Um, but yeah, I plan to have just really nice, you know, really curated, cosy evening. That's mm. again our experience with the granny flat is you know. You try to cultivate an atmosphere that the the music sits very comfortably in that allows people to really just enjoy it and kind of because mm. I think one thing about our music is that uh, it's you know it's like the pieces can be long and like kind of ten to fifteen minutes so you want to give you want to make people feel comfortable enough that they mm. can just sit and bring their own mm. beanbag yeah, yeah yeah exactly um, <laughs> I've got plans for the <laughs> um, but also just to be in a place where they can let let, let it wash over you, you know. Mm -hmm. I, you know, there's something about standing at a gig. Um, like I saw Lancome recently, and you know, it was really good, and you know, uh, a lot of the stuff I really like. But those moments that it gets very intense and droney, and like some of their songs are very long. You know, there's that sense of like you're standing, you're you know, <laughs> you just like. I wish it was just like really cozy and comfy you know listen to this music like you would an album at home mm. and um and that kind of music it sits you know more like maybe like a theater or something like that whereas like a more like energetic band or dance it's perfect for standing up in a crowd you know so it'd be really nice to just get that you know get that atmosphere right mm. you know definitely important yeah. and um we're hoping that people like the album as well like we're, we do. we really hope we're very proud of it <laughs> <laughs> we think it's really good ourselves yeah. like but um yeah, and you know the album itself is very—it's like quite epic in scale, <laughs> to say the least. <laughs> like it's pretty long, yeah. and um, I think we would like to have that. We'd like to bring, like you know, even if it, it, during, I don't know, but uh, how long are we going to play for? Like an hour or something? Is um, it? Probably an hour. Probably. Yeah. So yeah. like bringing, trying to bring as much of that, much of this huge album to like an hour set mm -hmm. as we can. You know, it'd be nice to have like that sort of atmosphere. This nice cozy setting where people can relax and you know can really get into it and experience yeah. it how it's meant to be experienced and it's like that thing where you know <clears throat> yeah i think people's relationship with music has changed in the last decade with streaming and with you know the ability you know not to yeah you know it's, it's almost like events or kind of characterful things are more appealing to people things that they can mm. you know um it's an experience rather than just you go to a bar and listen to a band kind yeah. of thing. Um, and it's really about that, trying to create something that's memorable. Um, and like, yeah, you know, we haven't, you know, I think you know, it's probably four months between each gig we've done in the last yeah. two years. Yeah. But I think that's that's right, you know, and we should think about each gig in a different way. And, mm. you know, the more, I think, I think the more we go on, the more we probably get a bit of power in controlling that, mm. you know, and trying to like, you know, we had an experience playing support at a band, uh, you know, at a kind of more straightforward band night. And it was just, it was different. It, it didn't feel the same, you know, and I think both of us felt, you know, well, let's not do that again. We yeah. To really yeah, we wanted to have, we wanted to play more gigs where, where we can, we can relax knowing that people aren't standing there going, what is this? Do you yeah, know what I mean? Because exactly. <laughs> it's not for everybody. <laughs> exactly. And I was in a band yeah, years ago called The Winding Star, and it was not for everyone. You know, it was a violin, cello, acoustic guitar and voice. It was dark folk. It was abrasive. It was more related to metal than it was to triad folk or whatever it was. Still sounds cool. <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, yeah, but, uh, I'm still, still very good friends with the singer and she put it on for her kids and they were like, what is this? <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> um, I would give them 15 years. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah. But it was, you know, there's something about, and we were trying to, you know, play any gig that was going and, you know, it was great. It was, you know, such good 
training as well and practice. But you just it's there's nothing worse than that feeling of like being in a venue or a, a situation that's not primed mm. for what you want to bring, and it, it maybe feel a bit like kind of aloof and kind of haughty to say, oh, you know, you have to be in the right frame of mind for our music. But I don't want to kind of like, I don't know. There's something about being a bit more generous and kind mm. of like, you know, if you if it's not right for you, don't come or you know want to kind of prepare people that it is much more mm. immersive and you know we want you to relax and uh be cozy and yeah. just you know but i think that's what i think uh, people uh, for me have often misunderstood what marketing is uh, the, when i talk to people about think they think marketing especially when it's a venue is about getting as many bums on seats but it's not it's, mm. it's finding the right audience for the right show yeah yeah because there's no point in bringing anyone to a show that they may not like mm -hmm. you know so it's not about you know uh, hoodwicking someone into giving us a fiver to come in in the door. It's, yeah. a, it's about making sure you know that this is for you, this is your community. Yeah. Come in and enjoy it if you want. And, yeah, you know, absolutely. See what it's like. Absolutely. Thank you so much for, for joining and uh, for giving up your time and hoofing it from, from Beaver Forest. That's right. That's um, right. Thank you. You're going back into the forest now. Yeah, that's where we live. It's a later. <laughs> so uh, uh, thank you, Tom. Thank you, Paul. Um, Black Triptychs, uh, look out for the album launch details and other interesting things. Where, where can they Google things about you? Just Black Triptychs? Uh, yeah, Black, Black Triptychs. Triptychs. There's a band camp, uh, which is just blacktriptychs.bandcamp.com and mm -hmm. Instagram, which yeah. is just Instagram at Black Triptychs or something, something isn't it? Like That's that. the way Instagram works. I, I think if you search Black Triptychs, you'll get lots of stuff about Francis Bacon. So <laughs> yeah. control through that. Yeah. <laughs> That's good to see anyway. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, it's good learning before yeah, you get to it. Yeah. Yeah. It's, all, it's all part of it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's great. Thank you so much. Uh, and thank you for joining.